of you know that it is thanks to the love and support of this community that we were able to build a village for special needs children out in Tanzania. That village now provides a safe and loving home to nearly 200 children that were living in crisis. Most of these children are special needs, but a lot of these children were homeless and the majority have no parents or guardians in this world other than the family that this community has allowed us to create. Everything that we do to support these children is made possible by this community and those who choose to share what they can and get involved and become, as I often call it, in their own way, a percentage of the parental role for these little ones. For those of you who are already partnering with us, thank you for the love and support. But for those of you who don't know about it, everything that we do is made possible thanks to partners. Those who choose to partner with our family and with it make everything that we do possible and keep our doors open for the next children who need some help or a safe and loving family home. If you'd like to hear more about our partnership programme, you can do so by visiting www.sharetanzania.com forward slash partnership. Thank you for all of the love and support, guys. We couldn't do this without you. God bless. I want to share with you all, or attempt to share with you all, a place inside your consciousness, a place inside your awareness of this world and this reality that many of you may have lost access to. Many of you may have forgotten exists and all of us needed to transform not only the actions, behaviours and thoughts and heart of ourself, but to transform the world around us with the love of Christ, that love that we point at with Christ which knows no condition, which chooses compassionate action in every moment it can. And one of the big failings with religion is that it has failed to emphasize bringing humanity to that place. And there's an endless theological discussion about how that happened with religious institutions and the dualistic approach of bringing to humanity the freedom of non-duality that Yeshua taught. But the reality is that we live in a world where millions know Christianity, billions. And yet the actions of the majority of those people are nothing like what Christ said they should be. And in my life, I often wander from where I should be constantly. I am better at discerning truth, I feel, than walking in it. And the times that I am unable to walk that narrow path, they come about when I lose track of this space or making time in my life to be at home in this space of consciousness. And this space is the presence of Christ. It's the presence of God. Now there are other factors to that. You can't live a life entrenched in sin, worship of worldly desire, missing the mark, using your vitality for selfish short-term gain over, over storing it for, for the progression of your destiny, of the original will for what you were knit together in your mother's womb to be. That requires vitality. And if we are selling it to the God of this world in little packets every day, we cannot fulfill the destiny that our Creator had for us. And so many 
are aware of this and you are opposing those behaviors of world worship you are repenting to God when you fall to them you don't feel good anymore when you indulge in these worldly desires and this pursuit of worldly desire and nothing else and that's evidence that God is starting to transform you that's evidence of the the Holy Spirit the Spirit moving in you to remind you of what it was like the first day you did something wrong and you felt it and as a child you simply had to confess even because you felt this burden of guilt on top of you because you knew you'd betrayed the truth of reality for selfish deception, self-gain, individual pleasure. And so the complexity of this is that the presence of God, the presence of Christ, it is not known through words. It's not known through thought. If we are to die and Christ be born, now these are terms, Christ is pointing at a love without condition. So see this as the love of God, the term Christ. It's a love that is without any condition. And in our life, that love is accessible and conditioned only by the mind, by thought, by self. And the mind will condition this love without boundaries, this love without condition, based upon memories and being protective and therefore not having faith. I can't love this person wholly because they're a stranger and they might hurt me. You lack faith. It's ultimately it. You are walking by sight, analysis, self, mind, and not by faith, where you choose to know that, yes, you're going to be scarred and wounded for the sake of that love. But it is through that love and that faith that people will come to know God. And so you must have it. You cannot condition the love of God constantly based on your fears. Faith must come, for perfect love casts out fear. And so here we have millions programmed, trained psychologically to know what the standard is. To know that the love of Christ should be with them in their actions and yet they can't get there. It doesn't come naturally. And so people are struggling. They are at home medicating and numbing out with entertainment, with distraction, with drugs, with alcohol, with junk food. All in the hope of filling this void that they have been told should be filled with the love of God. And yet somehow, for all they have read their Bible, and they've gone to church, and they've done everything to the best of their ability, whilst living in this fallen meat suit that we are all incarnating within and all of its impulses of the flesh, etc. The best of their ability to live as they have been told they should live, and still they are crushed. Because to plug in and refuel the body to have a heart which is overflowing naturally so as it can bring that love not through through training of the mind not through loving because you should but loving because you do this love is is not with them in its potency that it should be and I think better to say not that it's not with them but they can't they have not been shown where to fill up with that. Where to take time away from the chaos of life, the chaos of self, family, thought, personal history, personal self, and recharge with the love of God. To hear God's wisdom, God's guidance for your life. To transmit into this reality to be a bridge for the healing power of spirit into the lives of others to have a channel so open to the will of god that it can clear entities from people no one is understanding fully how to reach there and in my life the place whereby i recharge is always with us and I want to try and lead you there 
we get lost in thought but here and now there is an eternal peace this eternal peace is it's unchanging and it is where we can begin to move with the presence of God it is where we can be reborn instead of loving because we should or we were told to by by the book or by Yeshua but Yeshua the Christ that love without condition is in ourselves it's in our hearts and it's transformed us and now we must embody its love we must express it and we do not allow the mind to interfere the connection to that is only now you will not find it in the future and you will not find it in your past it is only now here that you can connect with the presence of God only this is your only reality, is now. And you better learn to live well there. Otherwise you will live forever in a state of death, yet breathing. You will chase after memories of pleasure in the hope that in the future the anticipation of gaining it again will fulfill you. And this movement of memory to future persistently being drawn through your activities of chasing worldly desire, memories of pleasure, negates the presence the present moment is lost when you move in that place we are trained in school to recall from memory and that we will pass in the future the presence of god is trained out of you in education and so we must start as children to find our way back to that and here and now inside your life and in my life and everybody's life there is this permanent stable love that you may not be feeling but it's there now to to reach there we have to take time away from all of the illusions that we've told ourselves we are we have to take time away even from the illusion of the structure of a self which is Christian. For that structure is not the will of God necessarily. You may have been taught badly by somebody. And so this ties into the sacred secretion. The sacred secretion when, when in place activates the higher mind. The higher mind is then at unity it is now in connection with the Christic dimension. The Bible says in John 1, 27, I believe, that the anointing that is with you is within you. And with that anointing, you need not be taught by anyone other than it. The anointing is the oil, it's the chrism, it's the ictos, it's the Christ within you. And it is part of man's salvation. It is part of the whole story of Christianity. It is the oil of gladness that you are anointed with above your peers, for you have hated wickedness and loved righteousness. It's an anatomical gift to allow you to function in great comfort and peace whilst you bring that love of God and the will of God through that connection. That place Let us put a few things down together Let us do a little self-enquiry together The name that you go by This was given to you A sound, a label That points at the human shape you are for now, let's put the name down under this tree where I'm sitting. We don't need it for a while. Pick it up later. Your nationality, let's put that down. You don't need it. It's not necessary. Just put it down for a while. Pick it up later. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I don't need that right now. I'm going to put it down. I'm a human being, a scientific label. For now, I, I don't need that label. 
to try and define what I am. I'm going to put that down as well. It's all piling up. I hope you're joining me in putting your things down. I am a charity founder. I am a father to many children through that charity. I am a YouTube personality. And yet all of those things in my mind that I am, I don't need them right now to define who I am. I'm going to put them down. They are getting in the way. They are getting in the way of my ability to recharge with the actual love of God in my cells. The story of the love of God in my mind that has manifest in my memories is even in and of itself a hindrance to that love recharging my body. And so I must even put down the memory of the story of God's love in my life and the identity that comes with that. So put down that identity. Relationships are a difficult one, of course. I'm a father. It's one of my core functional identities. I protect, I provide, and I do it well. And there's a pride in me that wants to say, this is who I am. But right now, I don't need it. I don't need that identity to be here now with God. If I need the presence and the will and the voice of God, I need no interference from a personal self. And so I need to let go of that identity. And whatever identity you're holding, you need to let go of it too. Just put it down under this tree. As I am putting these things down, which I did this in my book, another human being comes along and stops you and says, excuse me, who is the one putting these things down on the floor? And you will say, well, it's me. And they will reply and say, who is me? Oh, I'm John. Oh, wait. No, that's down on the floor. Oh, I'm a YouTube. No, no, this is on the floor. I'm a father. Oh, no, this is on the floor. I'm a Christian. I'm a mystic. Uh, no, I put those labels on the floor. And so the person can say to you, well, if all of these labels that describe who you are, you were able to put them down on the floor, who is the one that remains that is able to put them down? Who is that? Who is the mover? If it's not your name and your nationality and your scientific labels, if it's not your relationship, if it's not your memories of what you're doing, if it's not your religious identity, if you are able, as some form of awareness, to put all of that down and yet still be here and aware that you put it down, who is the one taking action? Who is that one moving? And when you ask that question, you begin to open the mind into something that is more permanent in your life. That which is more permanent and with us all, always. And there's a great freedom that comes from it. There's a, a lightness that comes when you've put all of this down and there's this almost humorous confusion as you continue to reinvestigate who on earth can follow that instruction and put that down if everything I describe myself as being has been placed under the tree. And eventually, of course, you are left with two words. If you go deep into that, who is the one putting those things down? I am. And I am is the unnameable presence which is within you, of you, and within reality. That is the presence of your soul as a child of God, and it's undefinable. You cannot even define it with all the labels you put under the tree. The one who remains, you, you can't define it. We cannot truly define that awareness that is looking through our eyes. We can't do it. And when we can't do that, we are left with faith. Now, as I sit here and that place is present, you can see that this place is here with us all. It's not a location. 
If I go over here, it's still present. If I go and look for it somewhere, that, that won't work because it has been born by unpacking what I am not and letting it free. The placing down of self-identity, of personal history, the placing that down is like cleaning a, an old oil lamp. The glass is blackened and you're just scrubbing it away and then the light is glaringly bright and you cannot name the light. You're left, I, I am, I am the one putting, who's looking through your eyes? I, I am, what is that that's looking? I, we don't know. Love, it's a loving awareness of some, some kind, some sort. And that is the same awareness looking through your eyes, looking through my eyes, looking through your children's eyes, looking through the eyes of a, a bird, of a, a squirrel, of a dog. It's, it's there looking through this loving awareness. And somehow this loving awareness has gotten tangled up inside the body, inside the 3D realm and the sentience that is that we incarnate in here for whatever causality it is that we are dragged into that situation, we incarnate in it. And, and as we incarnate in it, we become amnesic of this truth. And we believe that we are all this individual human shape and form. And yet we are not. For we can easily backwards engineer and see that the awareness looking through me is looking through you. And I say that awareness is the presence of God. And it's here. Now it's permanent. And, and when you see that something is with you that never changed from childhood to now and will not change as you go into adulthood, here you find the stability of the presence of God and here every void that was making you chase after worldly desire is fulfilled by an inner connection which is born through ultimately grace. And that presence of God is yours. You don't have to earn it. It's done. It's paid for. You through, through God's love, mercy, forgiveness and grace. It is there for you to access. Now, you may be dicing with sin, world worship, and that precious treasure that we find in that, that, you know, the precious treasure as the parable goes in the field. That precious treasure, when it is found, fulfills that void fully. It takes it away, it eliminates it. And so this lack in you that makes you chase after memories of pleasure or anticipation of pleasure, worldly desire, which the demonic plug at you, they, they whisper to you, they tempt you. That void that relies, that, that these pursuits of selling your soul essence into the world, the God of this world, as it's denoted in Christianity, is closed. And it may not be a permanent closure, but in those times where you get free of personal self, personal history and all those labels, the fulfillment of the presence of God in your heart really blots out the temptation of sin. For it heals. You realize it's the point and there's nothing more to add to it. <laughs> It's the peace that surpasses all understanding. It is the joy of life to be one with your Creator, not separated by the indulgence of thought, by the indulgence of labels. And thought is valued. We need it. But if you don't know how to be free of it, it will become a terrible master instead of a wonderful servant. <sighs> this presence that is able to look through your eyes and put those things down, it's present in the trees, it's present in the air. 
it's with you, it's stable, it doesn't change. And when you connect to here, free of personal meanness, the result is compassion. The result is conscious awareness of every moment, which leads to an open channel to the Christic realm dimension. And if the very filled heart of love that you hold is not enough to bring you to right compassionate action, then as you stay aware here and now in love with every crumb and passing moment of life, at least your connection is open for spirit to say, double back on yourself, you missed something. My child, this soul that knows a love without condition, that is burdened with a body that wants to condition it, double back on yourself. There is a cause, there is a reason, there is something there for you. This intimate relationship with God where you actually hear God's voice, where God actually answers prayer, where the power of God is seen through you in your life. This place is unattainable if we do not find space to let go of what we are not. And that can include your religious identity. And this is why we must fast, it's why we must pray, it's why we must meditate, and it's why you should ignore those preachers who are scared. They are afraid because they lived in sin. They went into a state of humility where they emptied themselves before God, and the demons came, and they felt that in the emptying before God of their own will, and their own desire, that they were filled with an affliction by demons. No, they were challenged. They were challenged by spiritual wickedness in high places, for they were about to become something that Satan can't stand. They were about to become a human being who lives for the will of Christ as a dominant state of being. When you find this sweet, beautiful place, you will understand. And if you can't find it, do what I did with you. Put it down and look and look and look. Drop your arrogance and drop your pride and realize that you are not thoughts and memories. You are something far deeper, far brighter, far more divine and sacred than just this image of a caveman who developed from an ape that we were raised with. You are a being of light. You are a cosmic child of God, incarnate in human form. And it is up to us to make humanity a species that is more like our soul than allow the species of humanity to make our soul more like Satan. And the presence, <sighs> that beautiful presence, it's where saints are born. And trying to live out that presence and its love from duality is where things like the Inquisition, the brutal murder and burning of human beings in the name of Christ, this was born from not knowing that presence and yet desperately through words and thought trying to understand it, trying to live up to it, trying to live up to a supernatural love from a natural state of being. Find it, 
I will leave it there. Take time to find it, and there you'll find everything. The meaning of life, the will of God for your life, and your supernatural capacity as a human being in this realm. And when you reach there, don't expect it to be pure peace. The devil is going to draw a bullseye on your back because he can't stand that frequency and he wants to drag you back away from it. But if you can anchor it, there's nothing he can do. That was all. God bless, guys. Have a blessed Sunday. Bye. This week I've been dealing with street children and the issues they face whilst out on the street in the local town. And it's a difficult subject to talk about. These boys and girls are not only homeless and hungry, not only have no one to love them, nowhere to sleep, no food in their bellies. Often covered in various different types of fungal infections and stuff because of lack of hygiene. Get involved with drugs, but unbelievably, there's even worse things happen to these boys and girls. This week I had to sit and listen to a child tell me that he had been raped by men in the town. It became such a frequent and regular occurrence that it was no longer abuse and rape to him, it was something that happens. So instead of them having to find him, he would go to where this was going on to be abused. Because that was his that was his physical contact in life, I guess. That was that was his routine. The young children who are hitting the streets, these men will then take younger boys to that boy whilst he does things to that child. And thus the vicious cycle continues. And the only way to stop the cycle is to take the children out. There's no need for these children to suffer like this. All they need is a place to go. They had a place to go, somewhere safe, where these men can't get to them, they wouldn't have this problem.